I want to tell you about one of the most difficult days of life. Physically challenging and mentally exhausting thing that I've ever A day where I was brought to the edge of myself. A day, the phrase, blood, sweat, and tears, a bit personal. Now, before you start to get emotionally involved or invested, I think it's important that I make clear no one willingly signed up for this. I knew exactly what I was getting myself into. Part of a strange group of people called mountaineers. And for some reason, we find enjoyment. <laughs> Thank you. And for some reason, we find enjoyment from putting ourselves in extremely precarious situations. Let me give you an example of what I mean. Entertain me for a second and close your eyes. Yes, that's for those of you at home as well. Now imagine you are on a mountain and it's the middle of the night. The wind is blowing and howling around your tent. And it feels as though you might lift off from the ground at any moment. And it's cold. I mean, very cold. I think negative 20 or negative 30 degrees Celsius. So cold, in fact, that instead of leaving your tent to go to the restroom, it made more sense to use the water bottle next to you. And you put that water bottle in your sleeping bag after as a source of heat. And to make things just a little bit more spicy, you also haven't had a shower in about 10 days. And the only thing at this point reminding you that you're in the real world and not on some nightmare is the fact there's a person just a few feet away from you and they're snoring. All right, you can open your eyes. This wasn't a bad day. This was actually a very good day. And later on, I'd be standing on the summit of one of the highest peaks in the world. But at this point, I usually get asked a few questions when I start talking about mountaineering. Usually the age-old question of why and then something related to my race or my skin tone. And the answers are yes and yes. See, for me, it's quite simple. Many of us have dreams that we explore as we're children, whether we want to be superheroes, we want to go on adventures around the world. And so in my case, I just never grew up. In fact, I'm still pretty active at chasing a lot of my childhood dreams. Most recently, I was able to eat cookies for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> Not my proudest moment, but a dream come true nonetheless. And the questions related to my skin tone are always interesting. Yes, black people and people of color do climb mountains. But as I began to research my quest to climb Mount Everest, I realized that there weren't a lot of us that were doing it. Out of all the high peaks in the world, out of the thousands of people that have summited Mount Everest, less than 10 were black. So I'm starting this journey from the suburbs of Atlanta, Ostel to be a little bit more specific. The highest peak near me growing up with Stone Mountain, which is a whopping 514 meters above sea level and just about 250 meters above the surrounding area. As a point of reference, we have skyscrapers in Atlanta that are taller than this. I didn't have any family or friends that were mountain climbers, and so I was truly starting from scratch, or maybe starting from sea level was a bit more appropriate. So I put together a plan. I consulted experts in the industry. I interviewed mountaineers that had climbed Everest and other high peaks. I wanted to give myself as much knowledge as possible to equip myself with a skill set to not only reach the summits, but return home with all my fingers and toes. And if you know anything about big mountains, that last part is pretty important. And so I was off to the west coast, the Cascade Mountains to be specific, where I would partake in mountaineering school for a few weeks, where I would learn the ropes, how to cross glaciers, how to rescue myself or other climbers from crevasses. You learn all the different things that you need in your pack, how to use your essential tools, such as crampons or an ice axe. And as part of this, we're able to summit Mount Baker, which is a bit higher than Stone Mountain, at 3,286 meters. So I was making some progress. And though there were a lot of tangible skills that I learned, one of the most important things that I took away was that there's essential items that you need to have in your pack. Not only if you want to reach the summit of mountains, but I think it also applies to a lot of other areas of life. And those things are confidence, passion, and a support system. Now, when I say confidence, I don't mean cockiness or arrogance. Those are the types of things that will get you killed on a mountain. I mean just a pure childlike belief that you can accomplish whatever it is that you're setting out to accomplish. 
that you have the courage to start the journey and chase your dreams. And passion, what we all know, especially when you're starting from scratch, the road gets tough. The mountains are hard to climb. And so you need the passion that fuels a perseverance to continue to push on and go forward. And your support system is obviously extremely important, whether that's other climbers on the mountain with you or the people that support you back home. Or, in my case, my faith. It's very important. So now that I had these new tools in my pack, I was ready to move on to bigger and higher peaks. I was headed to Europe, headed to France to climb Mont Blanc, the highest peak in Western Europe, with an elevation of 4,808 meters. It was going to be my biggest challenge yet. And if you know anything about me yet, I like to make things a little bit more interesting. So not only would I be climbing one of the most dangerous mountains in the world, but I'd also be doing this with a stress fracture in my left leg. Now, I did take some precautions. My guide, as well as my insurance company, were well aware of my situation, and we had strategies in place in case there were any complications. But I was determined to give it a go. As we, just a few days in, I was already beginning to feel the effects of the pain in my leg. And I'll be honest, it was worse than I thought it would be. But we made it to summit day. We got an early start around 3 a.m. And we knew they had a long day ahead of us, somewhere in the range of about 12 hours. And just a few hours in, my pain meds began to wear off. And I also began to feel the effects of the high altitude on my body. And I was exhausted. And when you're on a mountain for hours and hours at a time, you have all this time to be in your head and to contemplate every thought or decision that led you to that point. I would ask myself questions like, what am I doing here? If this mountain is only half as tall as Everest, how am I ever going to find success? Or would anyone care if I just quit and turned around? And this is where you're trying to reach into the pack and pull out those things that I told you about. But when I reached for the confidence, I realized that I'd used all that before I even got there. So I had to tap into the passion. I picked my head up from the snow and I gazed around and I soaked in the beautiful landscape that was around me. I thought about what it would be like to stand on the summit of that mountain. I thought about the kids back home that I hope to inspire and support through my climbing. How could I tell them to chase their dreams if I was just going to quit on mine? And that gave me the power that I needed to push on for a few more hours. And at this point, I'm doing what you call the mountain shuffle. No, I'm not talking about the dance. I'm talking about just a few shallow steps, one after another. And this is how a lot of mountaineering is done. And even though you're taking small steps, the high altitude makes it feel as though you're sprinting upstairs. And it's very challenging. It's cold, but at the same time, you have sweat running down your face. And you're exhausted, and every step is laboring. And this is where I reached the end of myself. I hit a wall. I was ready to quit. I was ready to tell my guide, turn around and let's go back. And that's where I tapped into the support system. My guide, he talked to me, he encouraged me. He said, we're so close to the summit, I know that we have what it takes to make it. And after that point, I put my head down and I prayed so hard. With every shuffle that I took, every step, I continued to pray for just the strength to take one more step. Now, imagine this. You're going up a mountain ridge. You're extremely exhausted. You have barely any energy left. You have to focus because there's just a few feet on either side of you. And after that, it's a steep drop off. And I don't need to explain what happens if you go down that way. And in the middle of this, there's a team that's coming to pass us. And I hear someone yell with excitement, are you black? And I was like, what? I was so out of it at that point, I don't even know if I responded. <laughs> and I put my head down and we continued to go. And we eventually crested the ridge and I could see the summit off in the distance. And I knew we were gonna make it. And I was overwhelmed with emotion. After hours and hours of suffering and pain, of doubt, we were going to reach the summit. And it was the first time in my life that I cried tears of joy. And it was an amazing experience. And when I reached the summit, the cherry on top of the cake was the guy that asked me if I was black. He was a French mountain guide. And as you can see, he was clearly excited to see me there. He told me that in his 20 years of mountain guide experience, he had never seen a black person on the top of Mont Blanc. And so it was an amazing experience. And I'm reminded of that, 
of all the differences that we have. And there's this unique thing that's negative 40 degrees. For some strange reason, that temperature is the same in Fahrenheit as it is in Celsius. And so although we have some, a lot of differences, there are certain times where we can find a common ground, and sometimes it may be in the strangest of places. So that was the toughest day of my life. But when I reflect back on it, I think of how far I've come, but also how far I have to continue going if I want to reach my goal of climbing Mount Everest. But since then, I've continued to climb higher. I've gone on to climb Kilimanjaro in Tanzania, the highest peak in Africa. At 5,895 meters, it's more than 1,000 meters higher than Mont Blanc, which gave me so much trouble. And after that, going on to climb Aconcagua in Argentina, the highest peak in South America, and also the highest peak outside of the Himalaya with an altitude of 6,962 meters. So I hope that the next time you hear from me, it'll be after I reach the summit of Mount Everest. But there's one thing that I want to leave with you. I'm not sure wherever you are in your journey, but I hope that you can find the confidence to start or the courage to take a step forward, that you can find the passion that continues to push you forward when the road gets tough, and that you have the support system of people that care for you no matter what the outcome might be. And it's easy to focus on the hard things, to focus on the big objectives, the big goals, the big challenges that we face. But one thing I've learned, the summit is an accumulation of every step forward that you take, no matter how small or insignificant it may seem at the time. So take that step forward and climb higher. Thank you. <laughs>